Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Phillies Talk Podcast presented by Team Toyota. Corey and Jim here with you as always. It's Tuesday, and the Phillies had a spring training game against the Tigers. They won the game 7-2. The big knock, Johan Camargo with a three-run double. We'll talk about him a little bit later. But, Jim, a lot of news to get to on this Tuesday, uh, which began with the news of Odubel Herrera's injury. Yeah, he's got a, a right oblique rib cage uh, issue, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, those sometimes can be a few weeks. Um, Joe Girardi is not always very um, illuminating on timetables with injuries. He's often vague. But he did um, acknowledge that Herrera is behind schedule. Uh, and with 17 going on 16 days before opening day, uh, it sounds like he's not going to be ready. You know, one, there's the health issue. you got to get healthy. Uh, and he's going to have some advanced diagnostics and MRI, I would assume. Uh, but there's also, you know, the matter of getting enough at-bats to be ready. So uh, it sounds like he's unlikely, in, at least in my read, to be ready for opening day. Um, and, you know, they were going to platoon him, at least at the start, with Matt Veerling. Maybe somebody could kind of grab hold of the job. Girardi admitted that he would not be surprised if Veerling uh, stepped up and grabbed the job. Uh, noteworthy, uh, he said they're not going to really be looking at Mickey Moniak in center field. That is uh, a real head shaker um, just, you know, f- for the reason that they drafted this guy as a center fielder in 2016. And he's only played the corner outfield spots here in um, in spring training, number one pick in the country in 2016. So, uh, it hasn't looked like it's going to happen for him for a while, and it, it still doesn't look like it's going to happen for him. Uh, Adam Hazley, another number one pick, would get some looks in center field. But, Joe, they're expressing some confidence in Veerling, a fifth-round pick out of Notre Dame a few years ago, 25 years old. He's sort of the king of the exit velocity down in uh, minor league uh, on the minor league side the last few years. Uh, hits, uh, you know, makes real hard contact, very athletic, can run, can throw. They liked what they saw of him in September, but he only played a handful of games in center field. He's only played like 53 games in the minors in center field, was a center fielder in college. Um, you know, with the, with the extra offense they've added, might be able to uh, handle him, uh, you know, somewhere in the lineup, maybe even lead off because uh, he, um, you know, they've talked about him there, but, you know, he's going to have to produce and uh, doesn't have an extensive track record. So, um, that's the way things stand in center field for the second year in a row. Uh, uncertainty, the uncertainty there in, um, in spring training, Corey. Yeah. The Phillies have spent all these high picks on outfielders. And then, uh, you know, Matt Veerling could enter this season really as the everyday center fielder. You referenced Mickey Moniak there. Joe Girardi said that Adam Hazley was going to get the start in center field Wednesday. How do you think he factors into this? Could he be on the opening day roster potentially because of this Herrera, Herrera injury? Yeah, I think he could be potentially on the opening day roster, absolutely, uh, because he's still on the mix, and they're going to need center field depth, outfield depth, uh, having probably um, you know lost Odubel for for opening day. At least that's the way it looks. But you're right about you know in the last um, since twenty what twenty fifteen, uh, Cornelius Randolph, uh, more of a corner outfielder, and then uh, he was twenty fifteen. Their first round pick, tenth overall, Moniak first overall in 2016, and then Hazley a couple years later, uh, another first round pick, eighth overall, uh, Hazley and Moniak center fielders, and none of them have really panned out. Cornelius Randolph is gone um, out of the organization, never made it to the big leagues. Uh, Moniak hasn't panned out, uh, and that's a big disappointment when you're the number one pick in the country. Um, and uh, Hazley's still around. Um, obviously, opened the season with the team last year, left for personal reasons, ended up coming back, playing in the minor leagues. Uh, uh, but you needed to really hit on you. You got to hit on your first round picks, and it's really, um, it, it's just been a, you know injurious to, to their roster and their depth and, and just their overall team that none of those guys have really clicked. Well, speaking of de- speaking of depth, one of the Philly signings this offseason kind of flew under the radar. It was right before the lockout, same day as Corey Knebel, I think that they announced yeah. it, uh, was Johan Camargo, the former Atlanta Braves infielder, a guy who played all the positions in the infield for the Braves prior to Josh Donaldson getting there. The guy who had a really good year in 2018 as pretty much an everyday player. He had a big knock Tuesday, a three-run double. 
Uh, Joe Girardi during the in-game broadcast said that he even thinks that Camargo could play some backup shortstop for this team. He appeared to that position today. If he could play some backup shortstop, I mean, that would make him even more valuable to this team. This is a guy who has a chance to get, you know, a couple hundred plate appearances, maybe 300 or so plate appearances, more, more than just a bench guy. Yeah. I like the pickup. He's a good hitter. It's funny. He had a great year at AAA last year, but mm -hmm. uh, and like you said, he was pretty much a regular in 2018 for the Braves, and it was up there for a few years. I remember seeing him play a lot. And then, you know, Josh, Josh Donaldson arrives, and then uh, Austin Riley uh, emerges, and sort of, you know, you have uh, Dansby Swanson and Ozzy Albies. Uh, they, you know, they're full in the, in the infield, and he's kind of pushed out. Um, and he, so he goes to AAA where he plays every day. And I think the Phillies made a nice little uh, signing there. I think he could really help. Um, switch hitter, swings it pretty good at the big hit today. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he could be a very important guy on their bench. I don't doubt that he could make play at shortstop, help at second base if you need him, third base. And I don't doubt that he could push his way into maybe semi-regular duty because, uh, you know, third base is, is, a, is kind of a question mark. Uh, they really want Alec Bohm to – Sees the job, and he very well might do that um, early in the season. Uh, but he's going to have to play well to hold on to that job, especially defensively. You know, they've lengthened their lineup. That should take a little pressure off him offensively, but he's going to have to make plays. Uh, they can't afford to be giving away extra bases and uh, extra runs and extra outs. And, um, you know, made an error today, a throwing error. Uh, he made a nice play kind of cutting the ball off in the infield and threw it away. It uh, looks like his confidence is, is just not there. He needs a couple really good weeks to build some confidence here. Um, but if, if it doesn't come, uh, you know, Camargo could be an option over there for increased duty. Yeah, I mean, it remains to be seen what happens with Bryson Stott, but his presence too could, you know, cloud up the picture over at third sure. base if, you know, if Stott or if Didi Gregorius even man some of that. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a lot of motivation for Bohm because there are guys breathing right down his neck yeah. behind him at that position. Uh, Jim, there were some roster moves as well Tuesday. Nick Castellano signing is official, the five-year, $100 million deal. And uh, Luke Williams, a guy who was a pretty good story last year, was designated for assignment. Uh, some other news as well with uh, arbitration guys. Yes, today was the deadline um, to either like come to terms or exchange arbitration figures. They have three arbitration-eligible guys. Uh, they settled, reached an agreement with, uh, with uh, Jose Alvarado. Uh, I think it was 1.9 million and Reese Hoskins uh, agreement, 7.7 .7 million. Zach Eflin um, is still arbitration eligible. I don't know what's going to happen there, whether they'll reach a settlement or um, end up going to arbitration, but uh, you know, you can sign at any time and we'll see what happens, what happens there. Uh, so those matters are slowly getting uh, cleared up and um, you know, they they won the game seven to two and it was a real bright spot in Sir Anthony Dominguez. Yeah, how about that? Joe Girardi on the broadcast said that was the highlight of his day. Uh, Dominguez coming out there showing the power fastball, kind of looking like his old self. Uh, this is a, a big X factor in the Phillies bullpen. If he can get you know anywhere close to as as effective as he was back in 2018. Uh, when he was taxed a lot. I mean, he was a rookie that year, and he pitched a ton yep. for that Phillies team, kind of caught up to him, and he's missed most of the last three seasons at this point. But he has a chance to make a big impact for the Phillies in 2022. Uh, big impact, especially if he pitches like he did today. You know, he looked like his old self. You're right. He looked confident. He looked really confident in his elbow and the health of his elbow. Uh, and, you know, when you have Tommy John surgery, and I've talked to a lot of guys over the years, um, who've had this, it's always in the back of your mind. Am I still the same guy? Well, I still have the same power. Um, and uh, until you kind of see it and kind of feel it and feel like your old self, you always wonder. And Sir Anthony, you know, basically admitted, he did admit, flat out admitted, he wondered if his velocity was going to come back or where it was going to be. So he was really encouraged uh, to, to pop it at 97 today and do that in your first outing. Um you know, he's still going to keep building arm strength, so there's going to be more there. So to pop it at 97 and with a good slider with that kind of Brad Lidge downward movement, uh, that was a really good sign for him today, both I think physically and mentally, to know that he, you know, he feels like his old self again. He's gotten himself in great shape. Um, you know, he looks really at peace with himself. He's smiling. Um, you know, I, I mean, you just I have a lot of respect for that kid. He's He's really uh, learned, uh, you know, come a long way in learning English. Um, and he just looks like he's really matured over these last couple of years. Uh, and having a setback like that, you know, that 
let's face it, it's your arm is your living, you know. Uh, and having a setback like that, where they have to reconstruct your elbow, you don't know if you're what, what's going to what the future is going to hold. And it seems like he's just matured and really uh, ready to grab hold of this opportunity. So he, he was really funny. He said, "You know, you wonder if your velocity is going to come back." But he said, uh, "I'm glad it's back. I'm glad I threw 97." He says, "I love velocity. Velocity is not everything, but I'm not going to lie. I love it." So and I was really uh, it was really neat to hear that honesty because. Hey, we all love power in the game. Power fastballs, power home runs. Uh, we love it when we watch golf on TV, seeing guys hit the ball 350 yards. Um, you know, big shots in, in hockey, power dunks. You know, sport, everybody loves power. So it was kind of cool to hear him admit that uh, he, he loves his power fastball. And, you know, 97 in your first outing, I think it's safe to say maybe, maybe more is going to come. And what a, you know, they rebuilt the back of that bullpen and there's some question marks. And, um, if a couple of these question marks can really click, it's going to really help this club. And he, you know, I think he would, he would be one of them. We also saw Brad Hand and Jerice Familia appear in Tuesday's game. Uh, Wednesday's game, Jim is on our air. It's on NBC sports, Philadelphia, Phillies, blue Jays, Christopher Sanchez, the hard throwing left-hander on the Hill for the Phils. What are you, what do you have your attention on Wednesday? When's Kyle Schwarber potentially going to make his spring debut? So on Wednesday, we're going to have our attention on uh, Nick Castellanos. Yeah, that's be, right as well. Yeah. He will be introduced in a news conference, and uh, I'm sure he'll work out and put a uniform on for the first time. He's got a locker in there, number eight. Um, and uh, Schwarber continues to work out. Uh, nothing official, but Joe Girardi said uh, maybe Friday, and that's a home game. It would make some sense. Castellanos probably work out for a few days, and then they'll get him in there. It's just an odd spring training. Everything's condensed. Uh, guys are not going to have the normal number of at-bats they – have going into a season pitchers aren't going to have the normal number of innings uh so it's there's going to be a feeling out process um from you know the first couple of weeks of the season i would imagine rosters might get expanded a little bit we'll hear something on that i think they're going to have to because pitchers aren't going to have aren't going to be able to go the uh innings that they normally do in the first couple of weeks so i think you're going to need an expanded bullpen but uh yeah we'll watch expanded chris by how, expanded by how many i, I don't know I, we haven't heard yet i i might Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe four, um, maybe two pitchers and two position guys. I, I don't know. Maybe two, maybe four. Um, we'll see. Uh, but I think they're going to have to do that uh, out of the gate because of the compressed spring training. But, you know, this Christopher Sanchez, uh, lefty, hard throwing. Um, he could be in the mix if they, you know, bring extra guys. All right, well, that's going to do it for this Phillies Talk podcast. A reminder that Wednesday's game is on NBC Sports Philadelphia at 1 p.m. We also have Friday's game, which, as Jim said, could be Kyle Schorber's spring training debut with the Phillies. Thanks a lot for listening. We'll catch you tomorrow after Nick Castellanos' press conference.